Answer your own question. What is next for James Harden and the well, Philadelphia 76ers? I think, Alan, what's next for the Philadelphia 76ers and James Harden is that they're going to come to some sort of an agreement this week on having James Harden with the Sixers for the, some period of time moving forward. Now, we'll see exactly how long it is, what the exact numbers are, but I think there's optimism on both sides that something's going to get done here. Now, remember, there's all sorts of ties around here. You've got James Harden and Daryl Morey who are together in Houston. You've got Tad Brown, the president of the team, who was also with those guys in Houston. And when this trade was made back in February at the deadline, the plan for everybody involved was for this to be a long-term partnership. And while the Sixers didn't get as far as they wanted to go in the playoffs this past season, I think when you see with the DeAnthony Melton trade they made uh, at the draft last week, the Sixers are going to go into this offseason with James Harden, Tyrese Maxey, Joel Embiid, and then how do they find pieces that fit around those guys and make those guys better? And DeAnthony Melton, to me, is the exact kind of guy they need. Terrific athlete. Great defender, great rebounder. This team was a bad rebounding team last year. I think you're going to see more moves like that from the Sixers this summer. They're going to get hard and locked up. And I think when you look at the way the East sets up, where you've got a bunch of good but flawed teams at the top, if you're a team like Philly, you add a couple pieces to what they had last year, I think you can reasonably look at it and say, we have a chance to make a deep run in the East, and we'll see if they're able to. Okay, well, interestingly enough, so four was the question about James Harden. Question five in your top ten questions that dominate the NBA offseason on ESPN.com is, what's next for Kyrie Irving and the Brooklyn Nets? So if you could answer that well, question. if I could answer that question, I would have a lot of money because uh, <laughs> I can predict the future. And, look, I, I think all I will say about the Nets and about Kyrie is if you go back to the start of last season, we have seen the situation with these two parties, Kyrie and the Nets, change on a week-to-week basis, a day-by-day basis, an hour-by-hour basis at times. And I think, in looking at this going forward, that's, to me, how I'm viewing this until there's some sort of resolution, is that I don't think you can look at anything with any kind of certainty here in terms of how it's going to go. Now, obviously, as my colleague Adrian Wojnarowski has reported extensively, you know, this situation is not in a great place at the moment, and certainly the Nets would like to have, you know, KD happy and Kyrie happy and this team, you know, set up long-term to be, a contending team, but you know, I think trying to game out now exactly how this is going to shake out over the next few days, as you said, before three agency starts at 6 p.m. on Thursday on Thursday afternoon, and before Kyrie has to decide on his player option for next season on Wednesday, you know, trying to guess anything in the future with Kyrie is a fool's errand, and I think that's the case with this situation too. Let, let's let's play the the hypothetical Alan Hahn <laughs> stuff, of you know. fool's errand. Let, let, let's right. do that. So, what would be the what would be the best landing spot for Kyrie, assuming that he is no longer a Brooklyn Net as of Friday? Well, I think, Keyshawn, it depends on what you mean by best, right? I'll look at it from the standpoint of what are the most realistic ones. And to me, the most realistic ones are the ones he can get to on his own and not including a trade, because I think making a Kyrie trade is complicated. So one of those is he takes a massive pay cut and he signs for the Lakers on – some whether it's the tax mid-level exception for several million dollars or the full mid-level exception for around 10. And now, as we saw this past season, Kyrie gave up a whole bunch of money um, because of his vaccine stance. So if you're going to see anybody give up a ton of money instead of signing a, a, you know, a max or near max deal to go to a team like the Lakers, I think you'd have to at least say Kyrie is capable of doing that. The team that I think is the most realistic option, though, in terms of getting paid is to go across town to the Knicks. And I'm not saying that's going to happen, but when you look at what the Knicks did at the draft last week, getting all these draft picks for the 11th pick and the moves they made, shedding Kemba Walker's salary, not having the 11th pick on the books, the Knicks are a couple moves away from having max cap space this summer. And, you know, so I think from that standpoint, those two teams, I think, are the most realistic pass for him to get somewhere. As far as what the best fit is, I mean, look, Kyrie is a terrific talent. We have seen when he's been at his best, you know, specifically with the Cavs in Cleveland, it's when somebody else is handling the ball and his job is just go out and score. We saw last year when James Harden was with the Nets, he pretty much happily gave over point guard duties to him, served as a shooting guard. So I think in terms of trying to optimize Kyrie, that's probably what you want to do. And ironically, the best fit for him overall, Keyshawn, to me, is with the Nets, where if Ben Simmons is playing next year and he's operating as the point guard, getting the ball to Kyrie and to Kevin Durant, I think that's got a chance to be a really, really good team and a perfect fit for those guys' skill sets if they can get all these guys on the court. Yeah, and obviously if they can get him to take whatever the offer is that they're willing to give him but not obviously fully guaranteed. The Nick thing, though, would be completely ironic because the guy they didn't want to sign, which cost them getting KD, although it's in 2019, ends up being the guy they get and not KD. But 
I, I digress on that one. Tim, I want you to do me a favor. We're talking with Tim Bontemps. Um, just, just at least just indulge me okay. on this one. I understand Daryl Morey, James, James Harden, they have the relationship. But if you just put it on paper, a straight-up Harden for Kyrie trade kind of makes everybody happy, doesn't it? I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't you, if you're KD, you're happy because you get Harden, and now the Brooklyn Nets don't have to worry about how he feels. And a Kyrie, when healthy, and obviously Joel Embiid duo, would be incredibly dynamic, and they'd get a guy who has performed in the postseason unlike James I think Harden. it would make all of our bosses happy. I think that's who it would make happy. I mean, look, that that is the the most fun hypothetical thing you could dream up, right? And when you, you know, when Adrian reported last week that the Sixers were on uh, Kyrie's list of teams he'd want to go to, that was my immediate thought, right? Like the world would melt if Kyrie Irving was traded for James Harden. Um, I don't think there's any chance that's going to happen. Like I said, all signs port to James Harden being in Philly and that being done. But yes, if you want to, if you just want to burn the world down and have the funniest possible outcome. That would certainly be it because I can promise you, you know, I'm going to be on Get Up today. If that happened, I'd get up, first take, every show that's been put on TV ever in the history of time and every radio show that's ever been created would only be talking about that for weeks. It would be truly something else. Tim, if if for some reason he did get traded to the Lakers or went not traded but walked in free agency, took – the ten million dollars mm-hmm. and decide to go play with LeBron. How good would the Lakers be? I mean, look, they would be a lot better, Keyshawn, but I still don't think they're a championship level team uh, if they add Kyrie Irving. Th- this team would still have basically minimum salary slots at every single place around those guys. We don't know. Obviously, we saw both Anthony Davis and LeBron get hurt last year. Are they going to be able to stay healthy? Are they going to be able to guard anyone? I mean, they would have a lot of questions to answer. But certainly, if they could get Kyrie either in a trade or if, you know, obviously if he signed there, um, it would make them a lot better. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.